an interview of captured mercenary of PMC Wagner. For the first time in the history of the division, the capture was done by a girl, combat medic named Lynx. The interview was recorded with the full consent of the Wagnerist. What was your objective? Our objective was simply to capture this position. You said you were told to kill someone. Yes, yes. The instructors told us to fucking kill people. Not to spare women, children, fuck, not to spare old people. And they explained it like this here, they have a street. In the daytime you see an old man walking, smiling at you, and at night he plants mine. When were you taken captive? Why? probably 15 minutes ago. How are you treated? Perfectly fine. We'll shoot you down. So don't even think about running off. You'll be done, they told me. And was anyone shooting someone down? Well, yes. What are we up to now? Having talked, I am providing metal attention. We saved your leg just now. If you had the tourniquet on for longer, your leg would have been cut off, I'm telling you. Do you understand that? I understand. I am very grateful for that, fellows. I give my consent to film this interview. My name is Ruslan. My last name is Mezinsel. I am from Siberia, from the Kemerovo region, from the city of Novokuznets. Thirteen years of imprisonment. Of those I served almost nine, signed a contract, and ended up in Wagner. What were you convicted of? Drugs. Was that your first conviction, or were there more? There was one before that, yes. How many years have you spent in colonies in total? In total, together with these nine, about 15 years. And what did you do for a living in general? Well, I worked for a construction company. I was engaged in the demolition and construction of buildings. Lived in Moscow. Did some business. I lived there for many years and then, in recent years, before an imprisonment, well, got hooked on drugs, started doing drugs. That's how I ended up in a colony. Tell us, when the Wagner PMC came to you, how was it? The operative staff arrived, asked which of us wanted to atone for our guilt with blood. That is same as in 1945, the fight against fascism, that kind of stuff. So you reply that you want it, right? I already went in with my thoughts, I just wanted to fucking escape, seize an opportunity, fuck, and here I am. So you were the man in prison, or they broke me, they broke everyone. I was the man. Downcast it. Oh, no. Oh, no. They broke me, forced me to write a rejection of criminals' traditions and a rejection of legal assistance. So were you a well-connected inmate? No, they beat me up, put me in an isolation cell because I wrote to the European court. They promised that we would participate in a special military operation. However, we were told that this did not mean that we would participate directly in hostilities, but that we would be given work according to our specialties. That is, someone would probably be engaged in construction. Someone would be engaged, for example, well, would be offered some specialties. In fact, everything turned out to be a little different. That is, I was assigned to the evacuation team. It was my duty to carry the wounded and killed out from the battlefield. And in the end, four days ago, we were assigned to an assault brigade, several people. And literally yesterday, we were sent to assault. How many dead bodies have you collected over that time? No. We collected a lot of those killed. That's even from those places where the battles have already taken place. Two to three months ago. Until now, 40, 30, 50 corpses are being taken out from there. The vehicle is loaded and brought to a specially equipped place, well, as it is called, a morgue. But it's like a big private garage. How many corpses per day was that? Well, at least 20 to 30, like that. There used to be more. Some of them have already lain there for two, more than two months. Maybe three, I don't know. They were already like mummies. Tell us about the assault. So, when were you sent to assault in general? What kind of data were you given? Well, we were given the task of taking the nearest Ukrainian dugout. It was about 40 to 45, maybe 50 meters from us. Well, in short, they gave the task to take that dugout. On command, we went there, that's all. 
And there it turned out that we did not succeed in taking it. We went up there, it was mortar shelling there, barbed wire. There were your fortifications, right by past the barbed wire, via the field, or via the shelter belt. One of us got stuck, fuck, and while he was getting tangled up, that drone flew up and fucking hit us. I barely pulled him out. Help, why the fuck are you just standing there? They'll kill him now, I said to our guy. And he was like, why the fuck do I need to do that? Are you fucking crazy or what? Pull him out. Those drones are prowling around. The shooting starts. I replied to him. The first group was about seven people. Mine second group, also somewhere around seven to eight people. Well, the third group, that was the cover group. And the commander with his assistants, they stood behind, controlled, well, controlled the situation. And so we entered the checkpoint. <clears throat> Those fucking two who were walking ahead of us, one of them took out a grenade and blew himself up along with a fucking fellow guy. He fell down and started screaming. In short, everyone felt no one even jumped into those trenches. All laid down. And that one from behind was yelling, come on, I'll reset you all to zero now, I'll fuck you up, shoot you. So at that time I was wounded in the leg. I began to roll away, got wounded in the arm. Seeing that I was wounded, the commander told me to roll back, to leave. I left that battlefield. I don't know how things ended there, but there was a continuous mortar shelling. Mines were exploding there for about an hour. Shelling came from all sides throughout the entire territory. Well, I managed to climb between the trees there. I laid back. I applied a tourniquet to my wounded leg, injected an anesthetic into my finger. I waited for the evening until the battle died down and then I was captured by the Ukrainian army. I heard a woman walking with a guy. The voice was, well, the speech was, well, Ukrainian. And that was it. I shouted, guys, and then I approached them. Actually, it was a very interesting story. Uh, Our aerial reconnaissance noticed one signature. It was not clear where. One of our fighters went to check what was happening there, since they had another task. And I volunteered to meet him there along with my companion in arms, and if there was a POW, take him because we know that we need to replenish the exchange fund. Therefore, there was no thought of eliminating him since our guys need to be released. Well, I said I don't want to fight. I think he freaked out a little. But that's what happened. So you did not want to fight at that moment, or you did not want to fight at all? Well, I did not want to fight at all, to be honest. Why did you go then? Well, I did not think they'd send us to the front line. While our guys were firing back, the guys from aerial reconnaissance said that they have not seen more dense artillery fire from our side. We were blasting there with everything we had. And the three sevens of our adjacent units were so perfectly pointed in that direction that they said that there were just body parts of motherfuckers scattered around. They've suffered really heavy losses during this time. They went on the assault. They have some kind of one commander who commands them and pushes everyone forward. Some of them injured themselves because they did not want to go. And he told us that he also had a minor injury, some kind of wound in his leg, in his arm. He himself ran off to the side, laid down to wait until this whole fuss was over. Then he got up and went to surrender. Nobody asked us. That is, we were assigned a task, given an order. We went on and that's it. And if you don't want to, what will happen then? Whether you like it or not, you must go forward, that's all. Execution. 
To be honest, it was funny to me to begin with because he himself was a prisoner and he turned out to be a very funny person. He approached us with the word glory to Ukraine and asked us to take him in to fight alongside us because he was tired of the constant, as he said, noodles that they hang on their ears about those who fight on our side and plus the fact that they were forced, according to him, to kill women and children. But he does not like it, and he wants to fight on the light side. I don't know who exactly took me prisoner, but two Azov men brought me here to the place. Before that, fine guys. I was granted medical attention. And, well, on Russian television, they show a lot about Azov. About Azov and also the right sector. They say that all of Europe calls them Nazis, that they are butchers. They talk about certain personalities on whom, allegedly, there is a lot of blood, and who spare no one, they kill everyone. Well, that sort of thing. We have a man named Ponomarenko who constantly shows, talks about the situation of military operations in Ukraine, Russia. Well, and with such a bias that, allegedly, Russia is waging a liberation war. That is, Ukraine is shorter. That Ukraine wanted to attack Russia, seize Crimea, and so on. Allegedly, if Russia had not taken the first step towards conducting a special operation, the Ukrainian army would have invaded Russian territory and perhaps would have reached Moscow. Stuff like that. And did you believe that? Of course not. Who are the main Nazis in Ukraine, according to Russian television? Well, the main Nazis are units, for example, like Azov, which allegedly oppose themselves, even to their government, and even to their president, that they ignore him. Yes, well, something like that. And your cellmate is, they did not want to go to the war either. Or what? Most, of course, did not want to. They were simply forced to go in order to simply escape the conditions of detention that exist today in our Russian colonies, who were the main people they scared you with on Russian television. Who is that? Well, mostly those from the Azov unit and the right sector. I can't recall their names now. What do you know about Stepan Bandera? Stepan Bandera. He was the leader of the liberation movement in Ukraine. He fought for its independence from the Polish occupation, from the German, Soviet, and so on and so forth. He was a well-educated person. He organized the UN and he made a very big contribution to Ukraine becoming independent. He fought against the Polish occupation, against the German one, for which he was subjected, in my opinion, if I'm not mistaken, to two life sentences. In 1939, the Germans released him and, as I remember, he was imprisoned in Lviv. They offered him cooperation, but he refused. That it is, he set the condition that he would cooperate with the Germans only if the Germans were to recognize Ukraine as independent. But at that time, they could not do this, since they had a program for the elimination of the Slavic people. And it turned out that for a while, for four years, they imprisoned him in one of the concentration camps where he spent almost the entire time of the hostilities until 1944. Then he was released again, already when the Red Troops were approaching Europe. The Germans began to cling to any of those moments in order to resist the Red Army. And they released Bandera. 
And then, as far as I know, he and his comrade were transported somewhere in Germany. He lived there, and I don't remember in what year, on the instructions of the communists. There was some kind of Czechist sent in, I don't remember the name, who shot him at the entrance. Well, I looked it up on the internet and in memories of his comrades. And I wondered what kind of person he was. After that, after the events of 2014, I realized that Bandar was not the person they are trying to portray him in Russia. That he was not some kind of thug, some kind of beast, and that he was a completely educated person who was not devoid of talents, who spoke foreign languages. See, you have to learn. You do not know that much about Bender. This guy came in pair. According to his comrades, Stepan and Revich never took a penny for himself as he constantly gave all the money to his compatriots. He fought for the liberation of the Ukrainian people from the oppression of the communists, from the oppression of the Germans, from the oppression of the Poles. I compared, analyzed, and I just came to the conclusion that this person is, in fact, worthy of respect, just like Nestor Makhno. I mean, he too was a great fellow. Actually, I even have poems on my page. I mean, I did a little bit of literature. I had my own page on the poetry through website. That was before I went to jail. There are poems directly dedicated to Nestor Magno. Did you write poems about Bandar? You know, I wanted to, but not poetry. I would like to write a book, but I simply do not have sufficient material. Maybe the Lord brought me to Ukraine so that I don't know what will happen next, but I would love to. I wrote about Putin, yes, the satirical stories. And after that I was busted and I ended up in a colony for 13 years. I have such a political satire on Putin, on our government. Well, something like that by Celtic of Shedrin. That kind of fantasy, yeah. A story about Putin, or what, a lampoon. The story is called The Last Day of the Great Emperor. This was just after what happened in Kyiv when people took to the streets. That is, I kind of well drew some parallels and fantasy forms, having described some of the events that happened with us. You, you have a family in civilian life. Family. I lived in Moscow. One time, I had a common-law wife in the 90s. We were not officially married. We have a son together. He currently lives in Israel, as it turned out that she was Jewish herself. So to speak, she was my ex-lover. She is originally from Moscow. And it was hard for me and her. We just had to break up. Well, I have my son left, and that's it. I was never married yet. Our Russian people have become inferior, indeed. Our brain shrank, and we even became smaller in stature and in general. That is, we were ruined by drugs, mass alcoholism, police corruption, and so on, so on, so on. The attitude towards the people is just wrong. I think that is what is happening in my country today. I mean, human rights, they simply don't exist. So if nothing good is waiting for you there, do you want to return to that country? What will you do there? No, I want to return. Well, yes. Or don't you want to? I don't want to go back there. Actually, that is not my country. Not in the sense that it is not my country. My mother is there, my brother is there, and so on and so forth. But the policy that is being implemented today, I believe that it is taking place in a certain way, so to speak. It is simply the genocide of our people. For instance, the Wagner PMC. Well, it's just an extermination going on, and that's it. People are just cannon fodder thrown at the very same positions and are simply exterminated. I don't know who needs it and why, in fact. They are not even properly trained. So you do not want to return, but how do you see your future in general? Well, it will need to be discussed probably with someone, well, I don't know, powerful, who can make a difference. I don't know, powerful, who can make a difference. I still have no idea about all these moments, how and what happens. I just know that if they bring me back, they will simply shoot me like a deserter or something. 
as much as I don't want to. Yesterday when I was captured, I also thought that they were going to shoot me just there on the spot. Well, do you think there are many people like you? Yes, most people, if we talk specifically about prisoners or simply about the general mass of our population, since I communicate with people and I know. Many people understand all these things correctly. Many say that we are not really right. Many do not agree with the policy that our government is implementing today. A lot of people, but they can't talk about it because, well, you understand that now our state has such laws that one can be held criminally liable even for their statements. Now, if, for example, one is spreading some information on the Internet about what is really happening on the front line, right? The information indicating that the Russian army is doing wrong things there. If you publish such material and with your own comments, then you will be punished. We have a corresponding criminal code, article, and any person can be prosecuted in accordance with it. Tell us what, in your opinion, should happen to make Wagnerites and not only Wagnerites surrender in mass. I think that information should reach them, first of all, that if they surrender, there is nothing threatening their lives here, that they will not be exchanged, for example, that they will not be returned to Russia. Then, I think, a lot of people would just drop their weapons and run across to the other side. What else do you want to say that is important? I looked with my own eyes at everything here, at all the destruction. I never even thought that something like this could happen. I'm, well, not just a shame. I don't even know what word to choose. I have entered many houses here recently. We went to those houses, the Wagnerites. We looked for pills collected some other items there. And I have been to many houses, and there were icons already covered in dirt, hanging at the entrances of houses and in rooms. Children's toys that were lying around there. And almost in every house, I saw icons. I see that those were good people living there. I don't understand what the point of all this is. You do understand that you are the enemy, don't you? Well, I'm the enemy just because I joined Wagner, that's why. Or am I the enemy because I am Russian? Why do you think you are the enemy? Probably for both reasons. I'm just hoping for common sense. This is just my hope, though. This is just my hope, though. Who's common sense? Well, the common sense of people who will continue to deal with me. Maybe they somehow, I don't know, somehow help me with my situation, actually. But no one will just leave me here, that's for sure. Therefore, I cannot even think about it at all. What would your life be like in Russia if you are returned? They will shoot me. Slava Ukraini. What do you reply to that? Slava Heroim. Heroim Slava. Slava Ukraini. Heroim Slava. Heroim Slava. Attaboy.